Now we've moved on to the marsh surface again, um, down onto the surface proper this time, um, and Max I'm sure will show you the, um, the type of vegetation more close up. Um, what I'm looking at uh, is the seed head of the Spartina in the immediate foreground. So the dullish yellow brown vegetation you can see is spiky 30-40 centimeter high vegetation. That's the cord grass Spartina which I'm sure you'll get a, uh, a more detailed close-up of. So cord grass then is the type of plant then that, which is becoming increasingly dominant in many of our salt marshes. It's, it's robust, um, it vegetates particularly by running along uh, through the mudflat and the salt marsh sediment uh, with, with, along the root lines. Uh, it also seeds uh, the native species such as Spartina maritima seeds, um, but Spartina tanzendi, which is this marriage between the invasive American species which was imported on the hulls of ships initially quite vicariously back in the 1860s and then has been used to develop uh, um, a type of vegetation which was planted um, to perhaps change the sort of agricultural value of these marshlands in the um, late 19th and particularly 20, early 20th century and around about the 1920s. Um, that sort of type of plant is becoming unfortunately dominant in, in our marshes and has created lots of coastal vegetation, coastal marsh problems. Um, the plants which Spartina are replacing, um, you can see some of them here. Um, Irish marshes are relatively poor in species uh, for perhaps a variety of reasons to do with natural uh, nutrients, vegetation, uh, sorry, climate impacts on, on the vegetation and the availability of fresh water. But whatever the, the reasons, we perhaps would only have between 9 to 15 uh, marsh plants as, as native, which are common in many salt marsh locations. One of them here, very common in this marsh, is Halamione, and I've just picked off part of the um, plant here, and you can see the characteristic nature of a salt marsh plant with this bluish green to grey, um, quite thick leafed um, plant, um, and here the nature of the plant uh, reflects its ability to store fresh water inside the large cell structure and to get rid of the salt which of course is coming in from the uh, marine environment or the brackish water environment that the plant is living in. So the plant is adapted through its growth structures, its cell tissue structure to exude salt, to get rid of salt through osmotic processes of, of pushing the salt out and storing fresh water inside the, um, the leaf cell structure. So that's what we see here, an ad adaptation of growing in a salty environment. So the Halomyone here, Halomyone portulacoides, um, very common and able to compete with our invading Spartina, which as I said has been uh, progressively more of a, a problem in the mid-20th century and is still uh, an invasive species. This one now, what remains of it, is what is called Salicornia, another name for it is glasswort. Um, uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, referred to as sort of the salt marsh asparagus. It can be collected and it's a fleshy plant again, but what we see here is the desiccated remains, the dead desiccated remains of Salicornia. And this again is a very common species within uh, British and Irish salt marshes, and this one at this site is being killed off by the invasion of sand um, and the shifting nature of th this area of, of, of the marsh environment. Sand being pushed progressively on shore by the erosion and removal of the front edge of the dunes, which then we see period periodically being stabilized uh, by more sediment coming in, but you've got this conveyor belt uh, process of erosion of front edge of the dune and then sediment moving in behind the dune along the salt marsh creeks, but also by sediment overwashing the low dunes you can see behind us. The result is this particular marsh plant is dying out. So this perhaps is quite a nice example that 
whilst the salaconia is dying back, it's more perhaps a, a combined natural change of sediment, uh, the characteristics of the sediment altering um, as the, the barrier shifts its position. But the barrier shifting its position, as I said, could well also be influenced by people. So this is, as it were, um, a step removed dieback of a plant or killing out of a plant caused immediately by sedimentary change, but that sedimentary change has been resulting from human impact uh, in, in the past.